This is the uh, Made the Move panel talk. Uh, I have no idea what this is supposed to be Q&A. Do you want to you talk? Well, I had a thought or two, but I didn't express these to you guys. So I just thought it would be interesting if we kind of just shared our stories as to how we made the move and what our experience has been like, and then take questions and answers. Sound good? All right. So um, my name's Deborah. I'm Frugal Fanny on Facebook, if you are looking for me. And last year, right after Pork Fest, we made the move. My husband, myself, and my son, teenage son. Um, and this strange guy, who I didn't know, well, I thought he was strange, said, hey, if you friend me, and I'll set up an event for you, for your moving party, and we'll get people there to, uh, to help you move. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know about this guy. I don't know him. But his name is Gordon Kemp, so if he does that to you, that's kind of like what he does. Um, and then a whole bunch of people showed up and helped us unload, and we were unloaded in, in a really long time. I mean, in a really short time. I'm sorry. But you are expected to provide pizza and beer, which is cool, because you get all that free labor. And you meet a whole bunch of really neat people in the meantime. And uh, so then after that, we... Uh, we just got to know some people like through the Quill and through Area 23. The Quill, the Quill is a place. Um, I guess maybe you guys could maybe talk about that a little bit more because so it's it, it's a social yeah Joe Joe yeah, so see I'm like the I'm like a mom with a teenager and we got moms with young, young kids and then we got single young happening dudes on the panel so um, and I live in Goffstown right outside of Manchester so my experience might be a little bit different than, than these guys. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a great community, and um, Facebook is really a great way to hook up to meet others in the community. And I do have some real estate information for those of you who want that. Um, what else? Area 23, we met a lot of people there. I hooked up with the Shire Co-op. Did you guys do your talk, or are you doing it later? Four o'clock. Four o'clock, in the tent right yeah. there? Okay. Um, so, I've just found the community very welcoming, and my son is in public school, so if you guys want to ask questions about the public school system up here, I'll answer those. But, so that's me, kind of in a nutshell. All right, next. So, I'm going to start with my mover story, and details in that can kind of illustrate kind of what you should do to help trigger someone else's move. Okay? So, first... I heard about the Free State Project because I'm a former uh, DC think tank employee kind of person. I was in that whole beltway tearing world. So I heard about the Free State Project as another liberty minded uh, nonprofit that I was just you know, interested in maybe working at, who knows. And then I, what, I, what I had to do is I started following people on Facebook, which I can't stress enough, uh, I can't stress enough just how important it is to network with people, specifically on Facebook, but on other on other networks as well. And so people can live vicariously through you until they actually make their own move. And so I was watching everything that was happening. I was specifically paying attention to the Free Coast group, which is very well run, the Vines run, the, the tight ship. And it was seeing all those Vanessa Vines Instagrams, those beautiful pictures of Portsmouth that really triggered my move. And when I said, I. I it's like, I gotta go out there. So, I threw all my earthly belongings in the back of my two-door Civic and drove the 50 hours from Phoenix with no clear job lined up and barely enough money for first month's rent. And so, I got there, I moved into the Quill, which is, uh, it's, it's a great thing. It's Manchester's social club, Porcupine Social Club slash Activism Center. First floor is like a kitchen and activism center, like an event space. And the bottom is a club slash smoking lounge slash all kinds of cool stuff down there. But then above the first floor uh, is living space that some people actually live in the quill. And so I, it's a great place, especially if you're a young, single, whatever, it's a great place to go move. Your first place to move is the quill because you get to be at the center of everything, get connected with everyone and just absorb the lifestyle before you decide to branch off onto your own. So, I moved in, again, no big, harsh, awful rental agreement. I just, you know, we 
we don't do we don't do like that. We're a little bit more. A little bit more, like that. It's a little bit more clandestine and trusting and has a better vibe to it, not like a Lucrez vibe. And so that that's literally all I did is I just started messaging people saying, guys, I'm coming to the Free State, yay. And then before I know it, hey, do you have a room? Why don't you come, come here? And then I already knew a few dozen people when I landed. It's like, oh yeah, you're, I know you, I know you, I know you. And so I didn't have any like t alone time to like, Hi, I'm new here. It's like, no, I already knew a lot of people because I sort of did the groundwork on the way over. And I, I live posted my journey, right, over social media. And I know a lot of, some people in this room were watching the whole journey over. And so now you don't show up alone. And so that was my, my whole experience was a very good experience because I sort of laid, laid the groundwork and just went. And in terms of housing and employment and things like that, I've never had a situation where it's so easy to just land in, start talking to all your circle of friends, and before you know it, you have something lined up. It's a very, I've moved, I mean, for the last 10 years, I've moved every year or two in my life, sometimes across the ocean, things like that. And this is the one move that didn't feel like starting over. It was the one move that I just landed and now I'm home. You know, I just I was home as soon as I landed here. And that, ladies and gentlemen and children, is my story. Can I tell them why we're here? Why are we here? Where did we leave? Where did we leave? Move from? We left Alaska after last year's Fest. Um, my partner and I came to last year's Fest, just the two of us. We had uh, the kids at home, and we loved New Hampshire and the Free State Project. And actually, I should change that. I, I mean, we loved Fest, but um, Mike wouldn't sign. Um, but I signed, and I said, he comes where I go. <laughs> so um, he did sign when he got to Manchester a couple weeks ago. But we had no real plan. We sold all our things. You know, we have four kids. We have a big house. And um, we're actually renting our house, which is never fun. But um, the house is rented. And um, so we left Alaska in the fall, and we spent the winter in Ohio. And um, I bring that up. Um, for two reasons, we almost got stuck in Ohio because without a plan, money, four kids, it, things got tight. And uh, but we did manage to make the move a couple weeks ago. What happened is we just divided and conquered. And Mike came up with our son, and he had a job interview lined up. And free staters gave him a place to stay. People that we met last year at Pork Fest gave him a place to stay with my son. He got the job. Um, and he also found housing for me and the kids in Antrim, which is a little town, and we're staying with free staters there and renting their upstairs. And um, so we are not young and single and immediately plugged in, but we are getting a lot of help, and it's great. Um, and uh, oh, while we were in Ohio, though, we met some other folks who are also already selling their stuff and get a move. They haven't even been here. They just heard about the community and decided that they wanted out of Ohio too. I was born and raised in Ohio. I'm very anti-Ohio, so I, you know, <laughs> if anybody is fond of the place, it's, it's not my kind of place. I love Alaska. Alaska is my home. It's where I've lived for 14 years. It's where I chose to live, you know, as an adult, and where all my kids were born. But when I got to New Hampshire, I was like, this is close enough, and there are people here. And I want my kids to have interactions with people. And Alaska is really thinly populated. Are you, we're gonna, you're gonna say? You're gonna say? You're gonna, yeah. So we're um, unschoolers, you know, and we want the kids to be able to, to do things and not just read about them online. So there's, you know, the Free State Project is awesome, but there's reasons to move to New Hampshire, like. Being in Antrim, like people are just giving me stuff. They're like, "Oh, you moved here? Here, have toys. Here, have clothes." You know, free staters have done that as well because we left Alaska with nine suitcases, and that's no, we don't have much more than that right now. So um, we did not have a move-in party because there was nothing to move. <laughs> so, so, uh, but we will. We are gradually meeting other families and. Um, We'll be doing the whole school meet up here and this is over. And I, that's, that's about it. So I encourage people to come to New Hampshire because it is awesome. Huh? Okay, should we get this over? You want to say bye? Bye. Good job, Omar. Uh, hi, my name is Matt Phillips. Uh, I've been here for uh, nine months and one day. 
Um, my story is probably a little bit different than, than many other people's uh, in that, uh, well, I, I'm, you know, I'm single and I didn't have to, uh, I, didn't, I, I got rid of all my stuff back in Washington State where I was living before moving. Um, but I had come to uh, Liberty Forum last year and then Pork Fest last year. And then I went to Freedom Fest out in Vegas and I met a fellow by the name of Aaron Day who is a mover and shaker here in the state, both um, sort of in activism circles and also uh, in some of the more uh, political circles. Uh, he is the chair of the organization called the Republican Liberty Caucus in New Hampshire, um, among other things. And I was chatting with him out of Vegas and explaining to him that I had a background in technology entrepreneurship and you know I was sort of thinking about moving, not sure, and he was like, dude, you gotta be here. So two months later I was here and um, ended up staying at his house for a few days to kind of, you know, figure out what I was gonna do, maybe get an apartment. A few days turned into, you know, a few months. Uh, I finally now have my own place. I just got um, word. Uh, it was a, we both now live in uh, Bedford, which is a suburb of Manchester. Uh, but the last nine months have been really surreal in that um, I have spent, you know, uh, I've met every single candidate for federal office and not just like shook hands with, but spent hours talking to. Um, I know um, many of the state senators and state reps and uh, many of the people that are doing activism here. Um, you know, friends with all the people who are you know, doing the Free State Project. Um, friend, even friends with people who aren't really doing Free State Project or doing other forms of activism, both, both political and issue-based and, um, you know, around things like family issues and schooling and all that. Uh, and it has really just made my head spin about how quickly, uh, because New Hampshire is, is so small and intimate as far as, uh, you know, um, the size of the population, but also about how politically, sort of, we have this heightened political awareness because of the, partly because of the early, um, the early uh, uh, national primary that we have here. So folks in New Hampshire are, are you know, pretty much accustomed to getting to meet all the presidential candidates before they make it onto the national stage to sort of assume to do that. Uh, so I've been able to, to get really sort of neck deep in a lot of, uh, on the political side, trying to get libertarian Republicans uh, elected, um, but also with a lot of the other issues too. So it's been really uh, amazing. If you if you are interested in that kind of thing and coming to New Hampshire and, and, you know, obviously you could come here and start your own business or, you know, raise a family and not really be involved in any sort of the activism side of it. And that's great, we need people to do that. You can also come here and immediately get really plugged into all of the activism that's going on here uh, and be able to make an impact right away if you um, you know want to, to do the work and um, you know to do the networking and, and you know, put your hand up and say you know I'm here I'm I'm ready to go uh, let's do this um, so if you have any questions about about doing some of the more over political activism I'd be happy to uh, to address those. Uh, and I guess with that, we'll go ahead and open up to questions. Uh, if you have a question, I'm going to come over and give you the mic just so that it gets onto the, to the camera feed. So. Hi, yeah, uh, this is directed towards all of you. So the statement of intent says that you're going to move to New Hampshire once 20,000 people sign that statement of intent. So I guess... I, what I want to hear from from you guys is how important is it that all twenty thousand thousand of them actually move to New Hampshire? Uh, I'll go ahead and start with that. Uh, I think that that twenty thousand number is a great number to hit. Um, there's there's some discussion about what to do once we hit that twenty thousand number. My personal opinion is that oh, you know once we hit that twenty thousand number, we should probably just reset the goal to I don't know a hundred thousand or. 250,000 or something. Uh, once we hit that number, I think it's going to accelerate. I think people are going to see that and say, "Oh, the, it's actually on. This is happening. I want to. I want to do that. I hadn't signed before because I wasn't sure if it was a real thing or not." So I think that's going to accelerate. Um, about 10% of the people who have who have signed have already moved, like in advance of, of hitting the you know triggering the move. Uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, indicator that you know of those 20,000 people, a lot of them actually are going to say you know, pack up their stuff and get over here. Uh, so, you know, and the other thing to consider too is, um, you know, I see Emily over here is a, is a, a state rep. Uh, free staters are uh, 25 times more likely to 
be participating in the electoral process if that you know is something that you consider to be uh, you know uh, valid. So we don't you know if we had all twenty thousand, that would be something like you know somewhere between you know two and three percent of the total voting population, which is a lot when you consider that many elections are well within that range of you know R's versus D's or however you want to you want to call it. So we. 20,000 would be great. I think there's probably going to be a lot more than that. Um, do we need all of them? No. Like, we're already doing all the things that we're doing here with only 1,600. So uh, that's my perspective. I'll say something. I think New Hampshire's a great place to live, whether you're coming for political or the Free State Project anyway. Like, there's a lot of really good statistics. And if you watch the Free State Project news um, Facebook feed, you know, there's lots of reasons to live here. So to me, obviously I'm here now and it has nothing to do with 20,000. It has to do with this is where I want to live and there's a great community here. So waiting for a number to make sense. For me, the number has no, no bearing on whether or not I was going to move. I saw Cynthia Chase call us the greatest threat to the state. Woo! That, that triggered my move. All right, that's what got me to move out here because not because I wanted to piss off this lady, which I did, but mostly because there was a sign, surefire sign, that things are happening here now. Not that, it, well, maybe down the road, if we can kind of get enough people to sign a piece of paper, and then hopefully within five years they might move out, we can get things done. I saw we're getting things done now, and I want to be here where that's happening. And so 20,000 is a great goal, although we're already making it happen with under 2,000. And I think that once 20,000 gets reached, why stop there? So for me, it just it was a good sort of groundwork type number, but it's no bearing on my actual personal move whatsoever. Yeah, I'm just gonna reiterate what these guys said. You know, I wasn't gonna wait around for the 20,000. I had told my husband a few years ago that we were moving to New Hampshire, and I was definitely moving by a certain date. And I wanted him to come with me, and he did. <laughs> um, you know, we've been married 20 years, so that's kind of a good thing. And then um, I had actually accidentally kind of found the Free State Project a couple of years ago, and just because I knew I always wanted to be in New Hampshire. But when I, when I found it, I was at Liberty Forum, and I went home that first night, and I said to my husband, I am not an alien. There are other people who think like me. There are other people who are open to other opinions, and even if you don't agree, they tolerate people. And um, so, yeah, it really, it really felt like home to me. So even when we were still in Massachusetts, these were the people that I knew I could associate with and talk to freely. Um, and then our circumstances. Um, set us up for a move right after Pork Fest last year. So so it worked out great and you know the number of signers has been accelerating and I think um, like this time next year we should be easily at 20,000. I'd be surprised if it's not before that. We have just about over 4,000 to go, right? To hit the trigger the move number. Yeah, so I hope that answered your question. Yeah, for, for people who want to move, want to, I was just wondering if there's any affiliations with businesses and stuff that are uh, sort of work with, with uh, the Free State Project that look to hire people that are moving to the state. You know, if there's any, uh, you know, what type of job opportunities? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, there's a Facebook group, uh, the FSB Job Alert, that uh, has a lot of uh, postings and stuff uh, about job leads and. and um, uh, New Hampshire actually has the, among the lowest uh, unemployment rates in the, in the country right now. In fact, Manchester was just rated number one, I think, of uh, cities to find a job, to get a job. Uh, there's so many companies here that are looking to hire people. Um, and of course, if you're looking to do something that's you know, sort of more you know, philosophically aligned, I mean, there's lots of uh, uh, people that are looking to do that as well. Um, I don't think you'll have any, any problem, uh, you know, if you're, you know, Good worker, and you you know have a resume, and you know you're willing to actually show up and work. Uh, I don't think you'll have any problem finding finding a job. Um, there's also um, uh, what was I gonna say? I don't know. Do you guys have anything to add? 
So yeah, so FSP Job Alerts isn't necessarily free state owned businesses, um, although a lot of them are posted by people who are free state project members who actually work within those companies. So connections are always good, whether you're in this project or, or somewhere else trying to get a job. Um, and there's a lot of business owners, kind of like self owners, like individual business owners within the free state project itself. And then there's also the friends of the free state project. Um, so, yeah. I realized what I was going to add, which is uh, there's a Facebook group called Porcu Porcupreneurs, <laughs> Porcupine Entrepreneurs. Um, I'm on that one. If you're not on it and you want to be on it, uh, please add yourself to it. I'm actually an admin on <laughs> it, which I should have remembered, but uh, that's for you know people who want to come in here and start small businesses or maybe they have a small business and they want to move it. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, there's also some initiatives in, at the legislative level to try and make New Hampshire, um, you know, more business-friendly state by reducing taxes and regulation, et cetera. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Did you want to add something, Joel? Could add something. Yeah, definitely. There's the Free State Project website has a forum, which has the whole job board on it as well. And face are off Facebook. Facebook again is huge, and not just the job alert, but you want to post in uh, region-specific things and just generally, again, the word of mouth with your friends here, because you, you have to have friends here before you move. It's just, should. And then, hey, I'm looking for this, just relentlessly post, things like that. And it, something surfaces really rather quickly. And even if you come here, as long as you don't starve to death immediately, it's pretty easy <laughs> to find something, you know, within a matter of, I don't know, week, week or two, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, yeah, like I said, we, we're running on fumes when we got to New Hampshire, and while Mike was waiting for his interview, he was put to work by free staters doing handyman work. So that helped that gap. Okay. Yeah, there's a FSP Rent a Pork. That's another group, and that's just odd job here. That I need someone to do this for a couple hours, whatever, and that's a, that's a really good one. Don't forget rental delivery lady. <laughs> and forget rental delivery lady. Any business or hobby that you have, you can. Hook up with the Shire Co-op and market your business through that venue. Food, hobbies, arts and crafts, whatever you can produce. Say that again so the camera gets So if you have a hobby where you can produce something, where we have the Shire Co-op that we're starting in Manchester. And if you, uh, we're trying to basically have a venue and a platform for everyone that has something to buy and everyone that has something to sell. So. You might have to have a part-time job or whatever all these guys are also talking about, but if you have something that you can make, like we have people that make handmade jewelry, we have people that um, bring their eggs, we have people that grow too much herbs in their kitchen, so they bring those to share. Um, whatever you can make, I make bulletproof coffee and I bring it to the event, serve it at the events. And, um, and um, we have a life coach, we have a guy that does kids' birthdays parties, and there's not any like product to physically bring, but he brings his business cards, and I promote the events, so I make sure that all of the businesses that all of the members have are being promoted and marketed and advertised on those event pages. So that could help be supplemental to your income, or whatever you need that to do for you. Just before I forget, I wanted to mention there are a million different Facebook groups, as I just learned. There's another one that I don't know about. Um, there's the Porcupines group. There's the Job Board. There's a Parenting group. There's I, I don't even know all the groups. There's gotta be hundreds. Um, yeah, and but there's all the regional ones. Yeah, the regional ones, and there's all kinds of events that you get added on to, and, and things like that. So it's like Joelle was saying. It's Facebook. I mean, you got you got to be on Facebook so that you can really get tied into the community. It's a great tool. So, um, somebody have a question? Any more questions? No, don't be shy. We like them. Well, I have some information. So okay. Don't have questions. Um, so Mark Warden is a real estate agent here. He uh, he owns Porcupine Real Estate, and he left some. Uh, Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> he left some information here, so if you guys want it, that would be great. Um, different towns, maps, business cards. Mark is actually my state rep, 
But he didn't help me move in. I don't, I don't know. I yeah. vote for him, I guess. Well, state reps help me move in. Yes, Miss Emily Sandblade helped me move in. And, Thank you. Um, of course, there's like a million state reps, so it's kind of like you either have a driver's license or you have your state rep card. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. if you, if you, you walk out of the door in the morning, you'll fall over one. Yeah, in addition to the whole word of mouth thing, um, Matthew Payne does this kind of thing for a living. He's a good hookup. But there's a bunch of different FSP housing searches that are regional specific as well as just general and get in on that. Yes, on Facebook, again, I'm just gonna stop saying on Facebook because it's kind of an implication. It's sort of like an auto addendum there. So get on that. Uh, Mark Warren is not my uh, state rep, but he did help me just find the, the townhouse that I just bought. So um, he was very, took me all over Southern New Hampshire looking for that. So um, probably not the first one I'll buy with through him either. So he's, he's very, definitely a good resource for helping if you're not, especially if you're not familiar with, with New Hampshire, uh, to help you figure out, you know, do you want to be in Manchester or near Manchester or nowhere near Manchester, Seacoast, whatever. Um, he's definitely a, a good resource for that, so check that out. All right, I gotta do it, I gotta shamelessly plug. So I actually just started doing, providing this service. Um, I have my first client starting after Pork Fest. I said I'm, I'm, I'm at Pork Fest and I won't be. So this is kind of a part-time thing for me. I used to uh, sell real estate both in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And there are certain things that real estate agents cannot or will not do for you, um, either by law, by ethics, or um, by willingness. And that's not a knock on them. They are bound by certain things that they, are, they can, cannot do. So there's a family moving from Alabama and they are going to move here and rent without seeing their rental home that they're going to buy. So I am going to be there, I mean not buy, the rental home that they're going to rent. I'm going to be their eyes and ears and the boots on the ground for them. So that is a service that I do offer. Um, so if anybody is looking for some assistance, um, it can be very low cost. It doesn't have to be expensive depending on how much work I do for you. So this is my shameless plug. Any other questions? I wish I would have known about that. I wish you would have had that last year. Yeah, I was a busy not last year all, moving. Yeah. Yeah. I would have not have spent all of the winter in Ohio had I had a place. Yeah, I was forced the first so many years of my life. Um, I just wanted to know what is your name and how would we contact you if we did that service? <laughs> oh, oh, hey. <laughs> On Facebook? You can find me, <laughs> Frugal Fanny, on Facebook. Okay, so that's probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. Will that work for you? That's great. Okay, awesome. Other questions? I can add. I, um, they're, what they're really saying is the truth. Because as soon as I landed in a bunch of different Facebook groups, I, had, I came here with nothing but just a bag of clothes. And I needed to buy a bed. And I posted, I think it was the close social, I don't know, it was one of them. And I posted, I need a bed. They had a bed right here. And I bought it with Bitcoin, and it was awesome. I, I just let you know, like, this is real. This is really real what they're talking about. It's not fake stuff. That's so funny. We not only delivered the bed, we picked him up from the quill and dropped the bed off at his apartment. Carry it there. Oh, you carried it upstairs. I didn't. I got left at the quill. There wasn't enough room in the car. Questions? All right, thank you so much for uh, uh, showing up and listening to us. I uh, hope um, it was inspiring. If you have any other questions you'd like to ask, I'm sure we'll all be hanging around or really just ask anyone anywhere around here. Uh, I'll be happy to, to you know, maybe answer your particular situation a little bit more and more in detail. Um, and enjoy. Yeah, we're around the rest of the week. And feel, please feel free to come talk to us in person. I mean, find a mover and pick their brain. Because if you want to be one, you might as well know what they're like and how they did it. And just make friends. Seriously, make friends with movers. If you want to move here, there's a bunch of people who live here, right here, right now. What are you waiting for? Find us. Yeah, and just in case you didn't know, there are people with light blue t-shirts on the back. It says, trigger the move. They have the ambassadors for Pork Fest, um, and they're wandering around, and they're willing to answer questions, and if they don't have the answers to them, they'll find you the answers, and like Joelle said, we're all here, so we'll answer questions. But I'm gonna go to my tent site, because I'm in the one-pot cook-off, so I gotta get my chili ready. Thank you all.